Danny stood in his new living room, staring at the empty walls and picturing what it might look like with his parents, Helen and Peter, in the home. He'd recently purchased the house, a bright, spacious place with enough room for a growing family. But for now, he was inviting his parents to live with him, hoping to support them in their retirement and provide them with the comfort they'd always dreamed of. He called them that morning. Mom, Dad. He started, with excitement and nervousness lacing his voice. I've been thinking, why don't you two come live with me? The house is big, and I could really use the company. Besides, it's time for you both to relax and let me take care of you. Helen was quiet for a moment before responding. Danny, that's very generous of you. We'll discuss it, but honestly, we'd love to. It's been too quiet since retirement. Peter chimed in, a note of relief in his voice. Your mother's right. We're not used to all this free time, and you know how she is, always needing to be involved in something. A week later, Helen and Peter moved in. They arrived with just a few bags, leaving most of their old possessions behind. Helen had always been a bit of a perfectionist and had organized every box, meticulously marking each one with colored labels for every room. Peter, more laid back, let her handle the details chuckling as he saw her fussing with Danny over the setup of the living room decor. Days passed, and Danny noticed changes in his parents. Helen, who'd always seemed so energetic, had slowed down. Her hands, once quick with knitting needles or paintbrushes, now trembled when she reached for her tea. Peter was more forgetful than usual, and Danny would sometimes catch him staring out the window, lost in thought. Once, Danny found him in the kitchen, confused and unsure of where he was. One night, as they sat together after dinner, Danny gently broached the subject. Dad, I've noticed you've been a bit forgetful. Are you feeling okay? Peter hesitated, his face shadowed with worry. I think it's just old age, Danny. Nothing to worry about. But he trailed off, looking over at Helen, who had been staring into her teacup. Helen reached out and held Peter's hand. We've been meaning to tell you, Danny, she said softly. Your father has been diagnosed with early-stage Alzheimer's. Danny felt a pang in his chest. He hadn't expected this, and for a moment, he struggled to find the words. I'm so sorry. We'll get through this together, I promise. With that, Danny's role began to shift, from a supportive son to a caregiver. He spent more time at home, often rearranging his schedule to make sure someone was always around. Helen did her best to manage things, but Danny noticed the strain in her eyes, the fatigue that had crept in and rarely left. He encouraged her to take breaks, even convincing her to join a local book club to stay connected with people her own age. One Sunday, they decided to take a family outing, hoping to lift everyone's spirits. They planned a day at a nearby lake, packing sandwiches and Peter's favorite snacks. The lake was a place filled with family memories, days of laughter, games, and shared stories. But the outing didn't go as planned. While Danny was setting up the picnic, he turned around to find that Peter was gone. Panic seized him. He searched around the lake with Helen, calling out for Peter. After what felt like an eternity, they found him wandering along a trail, confused and unsure of how he'd ended up there. I thought we were at the beach we used to visit, Peter murmured, clearly disoriented. They drove home in silence, the reality of Peter's conditions sinking in deeper. As the weeks went by, Helen's strength began to wane. Danny found her one evening sitting alone in the dark kitchen, tears streaming down her face. I don't know if I can do this, Danny, she whispered. I love your father, but watching him fade away, it's breaking me. Danny wrapped his arms around her, promising to find help. He reached out to a local support group, hoping they could provide guidance. It was at one of these meetings that Danny met a woman named Teresa, a caregiver for her own mother, who had been diagnosed with dementia. They bonded over shared experiences, finding solace in each other's struggles. Teresa became a close friend, someone Danny could confide in, and she even offered to assist with Peter when needed. One evening, as Danny and Teresa were having coffee in the kitchen, Helen entered and froze. She looked between the two of them, her face unreadable. Later that night, Helen confronted Danny. Is there something I should know? She asked quietly. Her voice held a mixture of suspicion and hurt. Danny was stunned. Mom, Teresa is just a friend, 
someone who understands what we're going through. But Helen's doubts lingered. The stress of caregiving, the fear of losing her husband, and the strain of adjusting to this new life had left her feeling isolated and vulnerable. Her suspicions began to grow, and she started questioning Danny's every move, feeling as if her world was slipping away in more ways than one. One day, Peter, in a rare moment of clarity, pulled Danny aside. I know what you're doing for us, son. And I see how it's affecting your mother. You need to make sure she knows you're here for her, not just me. Danny took his father's advice to heart. He planned a surprise for Helen. A small getaway to a nearby bed and breakfast, just the two of them. He took care of Peter, allowing Helen to relax, breathe, and find a moment of peace. That weekend, she came back with a smile, looking more like her old self. But the peace was short-lived. One evening, Peter had an episode. He lashed out at Helen, accusing her of being a stranger, someone trying to hurt him. The outburst left Helen shaken, and Danny had to calm both his parents down, assuring Peter that he was safe. This outburst became a regular occurrence. The more Peter forgot, the more agitated he became, and Danny was left to pick up the pieces. Helen's health began to deteriorate, her body breaking under the weight of her husband's illness. And in those difficult months, the relationship between Danny and Helen became strained. They argued over Peter's care, both desperate to do what was best but unable to agree on the details. The turning point came one rainy night. Peter had wandered outside, and in his confusion he slipped and fell, injuring his arm. They rushed him to the hospital, and as they sat in the waiting room, Danny and Helen broke down. I can't do this alone, Helen admitted, tears filling her eyes. I'm scared of losing him, but I'm also scared of losing you. Danny held her, his own emotions raw. Mom, we'll get through this. I'll always be here for you, for both of you. After that night, they made a pact to work together, leaning on each other rather than letting the situation pull them apart. They hired a full-time caregiver for Peter, allowing Helen to regain her strength and find moments of respite. And in time, they found a new normal, a life where they shared the burdens, the small joys, and the memories they still had, building a sense of family amidst the challenges. From the moment Helen moved in, she'd taken to Danny's home like it was her own. At first, Danny saw it as her way of adjusting, putting her stamp on things, trying to make herself comfortable. But after a few months, he noticed small but unmistakable changes around the house. A new vase here, a decorative sculpture there, Items he had never bought but that seemed to appear overnight, somehow always fitting her taste and style more than his. Then, he started finding her mail order boxes in the entryway almost every day. Some were huge, others small, each bringing in new items that took over the once sleek and minimal design of his home. Mom, what's all this stuff? He asked one morning, glancing at a stack of boxes labeled with the names of expensive decor brands. Oh, Danny, she waved him off with a smile, I thought the house could use a little warmth. All these modern lines and cold colors, it feels more like a showroom than a home. Danny forced a smile, reluctant to start an argument. He told himself it was harmless, that it wasn't worth fussing over a few pieces of decor. But it quickly escalated. The guest bathroom suddenly had plush towels, monogrammed with H and P for Helen and Peter and the kitchen was restocked with vintage pots, pans, and mismatched dishes that didn't match his modern set. Every corner began to carry Helen's unmistakable touch, and it seemed his own presence in his own home was being erased bit by bit. The first real blow-up came one Saturday when Danny returned from a long day at work. As he walked through the front door, the scent of lavender candles and potpourri hit him. To his surprise, the living room was filled with three of Helen's old friends whom he hadn't seen since his high school graduation. The women were seated on his couch, laughing, sipping tea, and chatting loudly as if they owned the place. Helen spotted him and waved him over with a beaming smile. Danny, darling, come meet my friends, Deborah, Susan, and Alice. We're having a little reunion. Danny couldn't mask his shock. Mom, you didn't tell me you were inviting people over, he said, his voice strained. Oh, don't be silly. She chuckled, brushing him off. This is your mother's home too, isn't it? Her friends glanced at him, their smiles fading as they sensed the tension. Danny managed a polite greeting before heading to his room, leaving them to their reunion. 
But that night, he couldn't sleep. A sense of unease had settled over him, and he knew he needed to set boundaries. It wasn't just his mother's things filling the house. It was as if he was a guest in his own home. The next day, Danny tried to talk to her calmly. Mom, I really need you to check with me before inviting people over. I don't mind you having friends here, but this is my home, and I just want a heads up. Helen's face fell, her expression a mix of hurt and indignation. Your home, she repeated, her voice trembling. Danny, we gave everything for you. We raised you, put you through school, and you wouldn't even have this house without us. I didn't think you'd begrudge your own mother a little company. Her words felt like a slap. Mom, that's not fair. I'm not begrudging you company, I just... I need you to respect that I still have a life in my own space. He struggled to keep his tone gentle, but the distance between them was palpable. A tense silence stretched between them, broken only by the sound of Peter shuffling into the room, unaware of the conflict. Helen turned away, lips tight, and said nothing more. Over the next few days, a cold tension settled in, and Danny noticed her behavior shift subtly. She no longer made small talk over breakfast, and she became more withdrawn. But that didn't stop her from continuing to order new items, and every time he came home, something new had replaced something of his. A family heirloom rug lay sprawled across the living room floor, replacing his minimalist area rug. His sleek, modern dining table was now flanked by antique high-backed chairs she'd purchased. Then came the final straw. One evening, Danny returned home to find the entire living room rearranged. His furniture had been shoved into a cramped corner, making way for an ornate wooden bookshelf filled with dusty old novels that Helen had ordered without telling him. He tried to ignore it, biting his tongue and heading to the kitchen to start dinner. But as he opened the fridge, he noticed half of his groceries were missing, replaced by jars of homemade preserves and ingredients he never used. A note stuck to the fridge read, took out some of the junk food, mm? Danny's frustration boiled over. Mom, he called, his voice echoing through the house. She appeared in the doorway, frowning. What's wrong now, Danny? What's wrong, he repeated, struggling to keep calm. This isn't the house I bought him. You've rearranged everything, you're inviting people over, ordering things without asking. This is my home. I invited you to stay here to make life easier for you and dad, not to have you take over. Helen stiffened, her face a mask of surprise. For a moment, she looked wounded. But then, something hardened in her gaze, and she crossed her arms. So, you really want me to stay out of your way, is that it? She said coldly. He tried to reason with her. No, I just want my home to feel like mine too. You have to understand. Helen interrupted, her voice barely above a whisper, but loaded with anger. You think this is easy for me? Do you think I want to be dependent on you, on anyone? But we're here, and I'm trying to make the best of it. Danny sighed, running a hand over his face. Mom, that's not what I meant. I'm trying to make this work, but I need you to respect some boundaries. She didn't respond. Instead, she turned and walked away, leaving Danny alone in the kitchen with a mix of frustration and guilt churning in his stomach. In the following days, Helen's defiance grew. She began to host small gatherings without telling him, filling the house with people who treated it as her home, making Danny feel even more alienated. She replaced the family photos he'd arranged in the hallway with framed portraits of his childhood, as if to reclaim her role as the matriarch. Even the garden, his sanctuary, was suddenly overrun with potted plants and garden gnomes she ordered online. Then came the shocking event that would bring everything to a head. One evening, Danny came home early, tired from a long day at work, only to find Helen giving a grand tour of the house to her friends as if it were her own. When she reached his office, he watched from the doorway as she flung open the door, guiding her guests inside. The group shuffled in, exclaiming over the decor, but it was the words that followed that stung. Yes, this is our office space now, Helen announced proudly. Danny doesn't mind, he's very generous that way. Danny couldn't stay silent any longer. He stepped forward, interrupting, Actually, I do mind. The room fell silent as his mother's friends looked at him, taken aback. Helen's face paled, and for a moment, they simply stared at each other. Mom, I've tried to be respectful, but this is enough. 
You're taking over my space, my life, and not respecting a single boundary I've asked you to. I don't want to be harsh, but if this doesn't change, I don't know how we're going to make this arrangement work. Helen's friends awkwardly excused themselves, sensing the tension. As they left, Helen stood there, shaking her head, struggling to speak. She looked defeated, as if he'd stripped her of a sense of belonging she desperately tried to cling to. But there was also an unmistakable flash of resentment in her eyes. For once, Helen didn't argue or try to defend herself. She simply retreated to her room, leaving Danny standing alone in his office, the frustration and pain of the evening hanging heavy in the air. It was Friday night, and Danny had just returned from another grueling week at the office, ready to unwind and settle into the weekend. He walked into his house, savoring the rare silence. Helen seemed to be out with her friend Alice, and Peter was in his room reading, so Danny took the opportunity to catch his breath. But just as he was slipping off his shoes, he heard the unmistakable sound of a car pulling into the driveway, followed by a familiar voice outside. He went to the door, confused, and watched as his brother Ryan stepped out, with his visibly pregnant wife, Mia, struggling to climb out of the passenger side. Surprised, Danny opened the door, calling out, Ryan? Mia? What are you doing here? Ryan grinned, throwing a duffel bag over his shoulder. Hey bro, mom called us up and told us you had plenty of room. Thought we'd take her up on the offer for a bit, especially with Mia needing a little extra support these days. Mia gave a weak smile, holding her belly and looking exhausted but relieved. Danny's eyes flickered with frustration. His mother had overstepped again, and this time, she decided to invite his brother and pregnant sister-in-law into his already crowded home without so much as a courtesy call. The three of them walked inside, and Danny tried to hide his irritation as he helped Mia settle onto the couch. She looked uncomfortable and drained, her face pale. It wasn't her fault, he knew, and she genuinely needed help with her high-risk pregnancy. Ryan busied himself with bags, thanking Danny profusely, while Danny's thoughts raced. After a few minutes, Helen entered the room, already talking at full speed. Oh, look at you, Mia. I'm so happy you two made it, she said, hugging Mia and then turning to Danny with a knowing smile. Danny, isn't it great to have everyone here together? Family should be close during times like this. Danny forced a smile, wanting to keep the peace. Of course, Ma. I just wish you'd let me know first. Oh, Danny, Helen replied dismissively. You work so hard. I didn't want to burden you with details. And I'm sure you'd agree, Mia needs her family now. Danny sighed, realizing any attempt to reason with her would be pointless. He had no choice but to welcome them as best as he could, setting aside his frustration for the sake of his family. Over the next few days, Ryan and Mia settled in, and soon, his house was transformed into a bustling hub of activity. But it wasn't the pleasant kind of busy, between Helen's decorating sprees, Peter's quiet routines, and now Mia's frequent needs, Danny felt his sense of control over his own home slipping away. One evening, after another exhausting day, Danny came home to find Mia resting on his couch and Ryan excitedly assembling a crib in the middle of the living room. Isn't this a bit much for the living room? Danny asked, struggling to keep his tone neutral. Ryan laughed, brushing him off. Don't worry, man. We're just putting it together here. We'll move it to one of the rooms later. Right, Mom? He called over his shoulder, where Helen was unpacking bags of baby clothes she'd ordered without asking. Of course, honey, Helen replied cheerfully, laying out each tiny outfit with care. And Danny, we'll just shift things around. There's plenty of space if you're flexible. Danny clenched his jaw, deciding it wasn't worth an argument. But as the days went on, he realized how deeply his mother had planned their stay. Mia's doctor appointments, her diet, even a room for the baby had been organized without a word to Danny. His own office had been converted into a nursery, with pastel colors and baby decorations crowding the shelves. Helen had even packed away his work files and rearranged his bookshelves with children's storybooks she thought might come in handy. One night, as Danny lay awake in bed, he could hear the quiet murmur of voices outside his door. Curiosity getting the better of him. He slipped out of bed and crept toward the living room, stopping just before he could be seen. There, under the dim kitchen light, he saw his mother and Ryan talking in hushed tones. What do you think? 
Helen whispered, her voice filled with excitement. Wouldn't it be perfect for the little one to stay here, where we can all help? Ryan seemed hesitant, glancing over his shoulder. I don't know, mum. This is Danny's place. You know how he likes his space. Nonsense, Helen replied, dismissively. Danny loves you both and this is family. He'll come around. Besides, this is what he wanted when he invited us, isn't it? Danny's stomach twisted with anger. He hadn't invited his mother to completely overtake his life, and now it seemed she was discussing keeping his brother's family here long term without even consulting him. He stood there, fists clenched, trying to keep his composure. The next morning, as they gathered for breakfast, Danny decided to address the situation. Ryan, Mia, it can we talk about how long you'll be staying? The room fell silent, and Ryan and Mia exchanged a glance. Ryan cleared his throat. We were thinking of staying a few more months. It'd be great to have support when the baby's born. Helen chimed in, and I'll help out with the baby, of course. Danny, it's only a few months. Danny took a deep breath, struggling to contain his frustration. Mom, this is my home. I need to have a say in who lives here and for how long. I love you all, but I didn't sign up for this. An awkward silence hung in the air, until Peter, who'd been quietly observing, finally spoke up. Maybe Danny's right. We need to respect his space. He's been more than generous. Helen looked at her husband, surprised and hurt. But after a moment, she relented, giving Danny a tight-lipped nod. Fine. We'll discuss things properly she said, though the resentment in her eyes was clear. That night, Danny went to bed feeling a slight sense of relief, but he knew it was temporary. Helen's boundary pushing had become almost second nature, and he worried that things would only escalate. And he was right. A few days later, Danny received a phone call from a friend, who mentioned seeing a social media post about a baby shower. Confused, Danny asked for details and was shocked to learn that Helen had organized an entire event for Mia and the baby at his house. Not a single person had told him, let alone invited him. He rushed home that afternoon, only to find his living room filled with decorations, party favors, and enough food to feed a small army. Mom, what is all this? He demanded, staring in disbelief at the setup. Oh, Danny, you're early, Helen said, startled but smiling. We're throwing a baby shower for Mia. Isn't it wonderful? Everyone's coming. Danny felt his pulse race. Everyone? Mom, this is my house, and you didn't even ask if I was okay with it. Helen's face fell, her expression turning indignant. I didn't think I needed to ask for permission to celebrate the arrival of my grandchild. It's not about that, Mom, Danny said, his voice rising. It's about the fact that you've turned my home into your personal event space and I have no say in it. I'm sorry, but this is too much. Helen's eyes glistened with tears, and she turned away, visibly hurt. Well, I'm sorry for being such a burden, she said coldly. I'll cancel everything if it bothers you so much. Mia, who had been sitting quietly on the couch, tried to smooth things over. Danny, we really appreciate everything. I'm sorry if we overstepped. But Danny was past the point of appeasement. This isn't just about the party, Mia. It's about boundaries. I need them, and none of you seem to respect that. Ryan looked between Danny and their mother, a pained expression on his face. Come on, Danny, he started, but Danny held up a hand. Enough, he said firmly. I'm asking for my space, and if that can't be respected, maybe it's time for everyone to find somewhere else to stay. The room fell into a strained silence, and for the first time, Danny felt truly alone in his own house. He walked out onto the back patio, needing to clear his head, leaving his family behind to consider his words. Danny was starting to feel the weight of his family's presence in every inch of his home, but he kept telling himself it would only be temporary. He was barely holding on to that fragile patience when Ryan approached him one evening, looking a bit uncomfortable. Hey, Danny, Ryan started, glancing toward the staircase. We've been thinking. You know, with Mia being pregnant and all, it'd be great if she could have a bit more space. It's getting harder for her to sleep, and that little bed in the guest room isn't exactly comfortable. Danny sensed where this was going but tried to keep his tone light. Ryan, I understand, but the master bedroom is, well, it's my space. I need some privacy too, you know? 
Ryan seemed to hesitate, then looked down, scratching the back of his head. Look, man, I get it. But just try to imagine what it's like for Mia right now. I'm just asking you to consider it. Maybe, maybe you could try the guest room, just for a bit? Danny shook his head, feeling a pang of frustration. Ryan, this is my home. I already gave up my office and half the house. I just can't give up my room too. A heavy silence settled between them. Ryan's face fell, and without another word, he turned and went back upstairs. Danny could feel the weight of the moment, but he refused to feel guilty. He wasn't asking for too much, this was his home, after all. The next morning, Danny woke up to the sound of moving furniture and muffled voices. He threw on a shirt and headed toward his bedroom, only to find Helen inside, sorting through his belongings with military efficiency, boxing up his things. His bed had already been stripped, and Ryan was in the hallway, shifting a few boxes labeled Danny's books toward the guest room. The realization hit him hard. Mom, what, what are you doing? Danny's voice was sharp, more hurt than he intended. Helen turned to him, looking mildly surprised but unfazed. Oh, good morning, honey. We're just making some adjustments. Mia's pregnancy is delicate, and the doctor suggested she needs more space and comfort. I thought the guest room would be more suited to you. It'll be cozier. Danny's frustration surged as he watched his mother place his things into cardboard boxes, items he hadn't granted anyone permission to touch. Mom, you can't just decide to move me out of my own room. I already told Ryan no last night. Helen's expression shifted to one of exasperation. Danny, I thought you'd understand. You're young, healthy, and you don't have the same needs as Mia does right now. It's not like we're taking it permanently. He stared at her in disbelief. Not permanently? You're moving my stuff, taking down my things as if I don't live here. What part of this makes you think you're allowed to do this without even asking? Helen rolled her eyes, her patience evidently wearing thin. Danny, you invited us into your home to help, and this is what family does. They help each other. Mia needs the room more than you right now. Besides, we're just trying to keep her comfortable. This doesn't need to be a big deal. Fuming, Danny stormed out of the room, retreating downstairs to avoid saying anything he'd regret. He could hear Mia's voice from his master bedroom, softly thanking Helen and telling her that she felt guilty for taking the space. Danny wondered if she truly did or if she had put Helen up to this, but he didn't want to confront her in her vulnerable state. Yet the fact remained, his family had decided, without him, that he no longer had any rights in his own home. That night, Danny tried to settle into the guest room, which was cramped and cluttered with a mix of his own things and the extra furniture Helen had shoved in there over the months. He barely slept, resentment brewing as he tried to understand his family's sense of entitlement. But when he went to grab coffee the next morning, he found the situation had escalated further. The kitchen table was covered with catalogs, fabric samples, and sketches. Helen and Mia were huddled over them, laughing and chatting excitedly about redesigning the master bedroom. Mia pointed at a color swatch and said, I think this blue would be so calming in the nursery. Nursery? Danny's stomach twisted. The room wasn't just temporarily reassigned. They were making plans to permanently convert his bedroom for the baby. Without a word, he walked up to the table, and the two women looked up, surprised to see him standing there. Is there something you two want to tell me? He asked, his voice strained with barely concealed frustration. Helen looked up at him with a forced smile. Oh, Danny, we were going to talk to you about it. We thought it'd be lovely to set up the master bedroom as a nursery. It's the biggest room and they'll need space for the crib, the changing table, and all the baby's things. Danny's fists clenched. No, I'm not giving up my bedroom permanently. That's my room and I told you that yesterday. It's one thing to help family but you've taken over everything here. Mia looked uncomfortable, glancing from Helen to Danny. Danny, I didn't mean to cause trouble. I thought you were okay with this since Helen said it was fine. Danny's gaze shifted back to his mother. Mom, why would you tell her it was fine? I never agreed to this. Helen's face hardened, her usual gentle tone taking on a steely edge. Because I thought you'd come around eventually. You've been so ungrateful, Danny, after everything we've done for you. We're only asking for a room. For family. Danny's patience snapped. Ungrateful? 
I invited you here to help, not to take over. I thought I was doing something good for you and Dad, and for Ryan and Mia too. But you've treated my home like it's yours to control. Enough is enough. Helen looked genuinely hurt, but Danny could see a glimmer of guilt in her eyes. She opened her mouth to argue, but Peter, who had been watching the conversation unfold from the living room, stepped forward. Helen, maybe Danny's right, Peter said softly. We've crossed some lines here. This is his home. For a brief moment, Danny felt a surge of relief, hoping his father's words might bring some sense of reason to the situation. But Helen ignored him, her attention focused on Danny. She turned back to Mia, who was still sitting silently, wringing her hands in discomfort. Come on, Mia, let's go back upstairs, Helen said. We'll let Danny cool off. Danny felt like he was living in a surreal nightmare as he watched his mother lead Mia back up the stairs to the room that was supposed to be his. Anger and frustration bubbled within him, and he could feel his resentment hardening into something more bitter. He wanted his family close, but not at the cost of his independence or his dignity. He was beginning to wonder if he'd have to give up his entire life just to get his house back. That evening, after hours of brooding in his cluttered guest room, he made a decision. He marched up to the master bedroom door and knocked, waiting until Helen opened it. Mom, he said firmly, this is the last time I'm going to say it. I want my room back. I've tried to be accommodating, but you need to respect that this is still my house. Helen looked at him with a mixture of sadness and irritation. Danny, please don't do this. Mia needs. No, he interrupted. No more excuses. You have a choice. Respect my space or I'll have to make some serious changes. A tense silence stretched between them. Helen's lips tightened, and she stared at him for a long moment before she gave a resigned sigh. Fine. We'll move everything back, she said coldly, her voice dripping with hurt. But don't expect us to be as comfortable here, Danny. I thought we meant more to you. With that, she shut the door in his face. Danny stood there, feeling a surge of conflicted emotions. Relief at finally taking a stand, but also guilt over the wedge this would inevitably drive between him and his family. The next day, Helen begrudgingly helped Mia and Ryan relocate back to the guest room, though she made her displeasure evident with passive-aggressive remarks and exaggerated sighs as she moved items back. The air in the house felt tense, strained, and Danny knew things would never quite return to how they once were. But as he lay in his bed that night, in his own room, he finally felt a sense of peace. He knew there was more conflict to come, but he was done letting his family dictate his life. He'd finally drawn the line. Danny sat in the dim light of his living room, the quiet settling around him like a welcome bomb. Over the past few months, his once peaceful home had turned into a battle zone, filled with frustrations and tensions he hadn't anticipated when he'd first opened his doors to his family. Now, he was faced with a decision that had taken root in his mind for some time, one he'd tried to avoid. But the events of the last few days had left him no choice. He needed to reclaim his life, his space, and his sanity. Early the next morning, he called Ryan and Mia downstairs. The two looked nervous, sensing the tension that had been building ever since the issue with the master bedroom. Helen appeared in the doorway, watching Danny with an unreadable expression while Peter settled onto the couch with a wary look, clearly anticipating a difficult conversation. Taking a deep breath, Danny addressed Ryan and Mia first. Listen, he began, his voice steady but firm, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I think it's time we talk about a realistic timeline for you both to find a place of your own. Ryan's face fell, his usual cheerful expression vanishing. Danny, I know things have been tense lately. But Mia's only a few weeks away from the baby's due date. Do you really want us to move out now? Danny looked over at Mia, who sat quietly beside Ryan, her hands protectively cradling her belly. He softened his tone. I get that this is hard. And it's not that I don't want to be supportive. But the truth is, my home has become, well, unrecognizable. I invited you all here to help, but somewhere along the way, I've lost my own sense of peace. Helen stepped forward, unable to stay silent any longer. Danny, I know we've had some disagreements, but that doesn't mean you should ask family to leave in their time of need. Ryan and Mia need us. Danny took a steadying breath, meeting his mother's gaze. Mom, 
I've tried everything to make this work. I've given up space, I've tried to set boundaries, but they keep getting ignored. I'm not turning my back on anyone. But I can't help if my needs aren't respected. Ryan frowned, looking back and forth between Danny and Helen. Dan, you're really serious about this, aren't you? He asked, finally grasping the gravity of the situation. Danny nodded. I'm, Ryan. I'll help you find a place. I'll even help pay for the move, if you need it. But I need to get back to feeling at home here. The room fell silent. Helen looked away, her face drawn and tense, while Peter, as always, watched quietly, his gaze shifting between his sons. It was Mia who finally broke the silence, her voice calm but tinged with emotion. I think Danny's right, she said, glancing at Ryan. We need to start preparing for our family on our own. We can't keep depending on Danny like this. Ryan looked at Mia in surprise, but he nodded reluctantly, giving her hand a squeeze. Okay, he said quietly. We'll start looking. I didn't realize how much we'd been asking of you, Danny. I'm sorry. A weight lifted from Danny's shoulders, but there was still one more conversation to be had. After Ryan and Mia left the room, he turned to his parents. Helen watched him, her lips pressed tightly together, while Peter looked on, a hint of understanding in his expression. Mom with Dad, Danny began, his voice gentle but resolute. This isn't just about Ryan and Mia. I need you both to understand that while I love having you here, I need my own space respected. That means no more redecorating without asking, no more inviting people over without letting me know. This is my home and I need to feel, well, like it's still mine. Helen's eyes flashed, and for a moment, Danny thought she would argue. But then she surprised him by sighing, a weary acceptance settling over her. I suppose I got a little carried away, she admitted reluctantly. It's just hard, Danny. Your father and I have been used to managing a house for so many years. I thought I was helping. Peter placed a hand on her shoulder, nodding in agreement. We're grateful to you, son. And maybe we did forget that this is your place, not ours. Danny took a deep breath, letting the air settle between them. I want you both here, he said sincerely. But I need you to let me live my life too. I need to be able to make decisions about my own home. For a moment, no one spoke. Then, Helen reached out, placing a gentle hand on Danny's arm. All right, Danny, she said quietly, her voice softer than he'd heard in a long time. We'll respect your boundaries. And thank you, thank you for letting us stay. The weeks that followed marked a slow but remarkable transformation in the household. Ryan and Mia, true to their word, began searching for a new place. Danny was surprised when Mia asked him to help look at apartments, wanting his advice on finding a good neighborhood for a growing family. She admitted that she wanted to make up for the trouble they had caused him, and Danny felt a sense of relief as he watched them eagerly plan their next steps. In an unexpected twist, Helen also began to change. She no longer imposed her decorating choices on Danny's home and started asking him if he was comfortable with any adjustments she wanted to make, which were minor compared to her previous overhauls. She even stopped ordering items without his permission. One day, she sheepishly asked him if he would mind if she added a potted plant to the living room. When Danny laughed and agreed, it felt like the first sign of true peace between them in months. Peter, who had been a quiet but grounding force through it all, became more open as well, often joining Danny in the evenings to chat about everything from books to news. Danny cherished these conversations, grateful for a glimpse of his parents as they had once been, without the strained energy of the previous months. Finally, the day came when Ryan and Mia packed up their things to move to their new apartment. Danny helped load the truck, making sure to lend a hand every step of the way. When it was time for them to leave, Mia pulled him into a hug, her eyes teary but happy. Thank you, Danny, she whispered, for giving us the push we needed. And for being there for us, even when it was hard. Ryan clapped his brother on the shoulder. Thanks, bro. For everything. I'm sorry for putting you through all that. You really held things together. Danny smiled, giving his brother a firm handshake. Take care of Mia and the baby. And visit whenever you want, as long as you promise not to take over the house. Everyone laughed, a sense of genuine relief and camaraderie filling the air. As the moving truck drove away, 
Danny felt an overwhelming sense of peace. For the first time in months, he felt like he could finally breathe in his own home. That evening, Helen approached Danny as he was making tea in the kitchen. She looked hesitant, almost shy, as she leaned against the counter. You know, I'm proud of you, Danny, she said softly, for standing up for yourself, for knowing what you needed and asking for it. I'm sorry if I made you feel like a stranger in your own home. Danny smiled, feeling a warmth he hadn't felt toward his mother in a long time. Thanks, Mo. And I'm sorry, too, for not speaking up sooner. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Helen nodded, and for the first time, Danny noticed the lines of worry on her face softening, replaced by something closer to acceptance. You've turned out to be quite the man, Danny. We're lucky to have a son like you. As she left the room, Danny felt a profound sense of peace, the kind that comes only when things finally fall into place. His family had learned to respect his space, and with that respect came a newfound closeness he hadn't thought possible. They were still family, but now, they were a family bound not by obligation, but by a mutual respect and understanding that hadn't been there before. In the weeks that followed, the house remained quieter, calmer. The once-cluttered guest room returned to its former simplicity, and Danny found himself enjoying the empty spaces again. His parents began to spend more time out, reconnecting with friends and rediscovering a life outside his home. And when they did spend time together, it was with a lighter, more harmonious atmosphere, free of the previous tensions. Danny's home was finally his again. And while his family was always welcome, they now understood that they were guests in his life and his space. A space where he could breathe, think, and be himself.